congratulations. New album, third studio, al studio album, All American. There are a lot of people in the studio who are fans of yours. They're just trying not to make it obvious. So tell your fans what they can expect. On the album? Yes. Oh, the, I mean, it's a riot. It's a, this is a lot of fun. You know, I wanted to create songs that that um, people could sing to and, and have fun with. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to make an album that just wasn't, didn't really take myself too serious. I mean, there's like, every song has like a little story. In a lot of ways, I wanted to create like, almost like a pop rock sort of musical in a way, you know, like an yeah. album that had, uh, I don't know, just had this like story all the way through. And, and one of the lines, the threads was that just, just to, kind of not take myself too seriously and have fun with it and, and make you laugh a little bit, so. You are in Canada right now, and you also have a Canadian who you collaborated with, uh, that's Avril Lavigne. Mm -hmm. So what was it like working together and how did that happen? Well, I mean, Avril, I've always been a huge fan of what she's done, uh, particularly because she's focused on doing like pop rock type music. Um, as the Backstreet Boy, you know, We've done some stuff and uh, touched on that in the past, but but really we're more of like a R&B sort of pop R&B based group. And um, you know she, we had done a tour together with her the last uh, in a world like this tour, and we kind of really became friends. And we were hanging out after the show and talking and stuff. And um, yeah, so I was just a fan, and I asked her if she would uh, you know record on this one song that I had written on this album, and she liked it. And um, she laid her vocals down on it, and I sent it to her. We actually didn't get into the studio together because she was feeling kind of ill. Yeah. Still, but like she trooped through it, and she she really is a fan of this record. And I was so happy to work with her because, in a lot of ways, I, I wish that I had a solo career that was similar to hers. Now you're out on the road. You're promoting. You're performing on your own. So for your fans who are coming to see you, is there going to be like a little bit of a Backstreet flavor, like do you there's throw a lot of any? Do you throw any of those? No, there's a lot of Backstreet and, flavor. Yeah. that's the thing. Um, you know, everyone knows if you are a fan of me, I, I do, uh, you know, pour a little uh, rock flavor on top of you know my music. You know, but um, at the same time, I'm lucky to to have Backstreet Boys fans. You know, and and so you know, I want to put on a great show. So I decided to incorporate a lot of our hits in there. I mean, I do. I want it that way. Large in life, back just back, but we do our own like little okay. renditions and versions yeah. of those songs. So it's so. familiar but fresh. Absolutely, and um, I do some cover songs. I mean, really, I'm pretty happy with the way people are responding to the show. So, okay. but it's just, I just want to make sure that everyone leaves happy and, and satiated and can be a little nostalgic at the same time. Uh, enjoy some and discover some new music. What do the other guys think of this and, you know, you know the work on it that you've put in and have they heard have you played it for them? Uh, I mean, all the guys are super proud of what, what I've done, you know, from Dancing with the Stars to, to um, you know, doing an album to getting ready for a baby and all these things. It's just, uh, we support each other so much uh, as individuals because as individuals we're able to grow, um, you know, as a group as well. So uh, they're just, they couldn't be more proud of what I've done. And, and also I found, my, I found my thing, it's my niche. You know, it's something that I enjoy. I enjoy picking up an electric guitar yeah. and, and rocking out a little bit. I enjoy dancing a little bit. I'm kind of like a little bit of everything, you know, when you come and see my show. Well, you speak, you say that you're a little bit of everything and it's true that you're really diversifying your career. So. There's the work that you do with the guys, your solo career, dancing, and then movies. Yeah. So let's talk about this movie because it's coming out Dead 7. Yes. And I just want to get the list right. Howie, AJ, Joey Fatone, Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC, Jeff Timmons from 98 Degrees. Uh, what all are you all doing in Dead 7? Yeah, I mean, yeah. is there, like, is it a boy band killing spree? <laughs> is it, like, what are we seeing in this well, movie? you can expect some interesting deaths from the, <laughs> the Dead Seven, because it's the title. <laughs> yeah, the storyline is, um, uh, we're, a, 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 it's set in post-apocalyptic era. Okay. Uh, so everything kind of reverts back to an old Western type town. You know, there's it. sheriffs and there's gunslingers yeah. and all that type of stuff. Um, and this town is actually being harassed uh, by um, uh, zombies and by a, a villain. Her name is Apocalypta. 
AJ actually plays a villain as well. Uh, his name is Johnny Vermillion. Anyways, um, the town finally gets fed up with it, and they hire this uh, gang of bandits, uh, gun gunslingers, called the Dead Seven. Okay. And they create this group of Dead Seven, and so they you're go, a gunslinger. They go. So I'm one of the heroes, okay. and my name is Jack. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. It's like out of this world. I mean, and you would it's something you would expect, obviously, from the guys who did Sharknado. Yeah. You know, so uh, them and myself, we produced it together. My company, Chaotic, and them. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a riot, it's a lot of fun. I, I played some of it actually for some of our fans the other day, uh, just giving them a little sample yeah. of it. And th they literally cannot compute it. It's like, it's hard for them to understand. And they're, and I'm like, what do you think? I, I was like a little worried. And they're like, it's amazing. I can't <laughs> believe it. Like, so I'm really happy it comes out April 1st uh, in, in America on Sci-Fi. I think there's an association up here in Canada um, an affiliate with yeah. sci-fi that's going to release it as well. I wanted to, because I'm, you know, you, we have your wealth of experience um, here, we, I want to talk to you about One Direction's hiatus, because they're currently on hiatus. Right. You have been a member of a boy band for as long as we've known you. Mm -hmm. how, how do you stay together and keep it strong and have different interests but still manage to... Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard, you know, like and you can never really predict what what's going to happen in one situation. Um, I think that's the one thing that the Backstreet Boys have always paid attention to is that, look, it's the Backstreet Boys that got us to this point. You know what I mean? Without each other, uh, I would never have a solo career, movies, all these other things. So always appreciate and respect the bond that we have the foundation. The foundation, mm -hmm. and never, never feel like we're too big. We're bigger than that. Okay. You know, in a lot of ways, it's. I mean, you see it happen with like groups like the Rolling Stones, yeah. or you know, you see uh, a lot of rock bands or people have done it before. Yeah. Were they been able been able to to uh, do both? Um, we're able to do that, and uh, just never really lose sight of not just ourselves and the group, but the fans that got yeah. us there, because you. you you never can take it for granted because yeah. you can lose them. Yeah. You know, they could just drop off the planet and be, be like, we don't care anymore. So I've got to always take care of the fan base first. I love that you appreciate that because yeah. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that it's a lesson you you learn overnight. So no, I love that not. you're saying yeah, that. No, I mean, I mean, I think that just it just kind of um, it's, it's a testament to what who we are as individuals and, and our personalities and and you've respected that bond, so the Backstreet Boys are still the Backstreet Boys, and there have been rumors that there's going to be a Vegas residency. Can you talk about this a yeah, little bit? Yeah, no, they're, um, we're working on doing a night. We have a deal with Live Nation where we have to go out and put on, I think, 130-something shows, and so we just signed uh, another deal where we're going to go to Vegas for about nine shows um, and kind of do a trial run. Okay. You know, like, Vegas is a little... Sometimes they're a little worried about, you know, some shows do well, some don't, yeah. you know, and, and so we're going to go out there for nine shows, and if it does well, then, then we probably will do a, a Vegas res residency. This will be after we uh, go on tour, okay. uh, after this next album we uh, finish. So speaking of the tour, there were other reports that the tour would involve, like, Spice Girls. Yeah, and we, we talked about it. We threw yeah. it out there, you know, the girls. Uh, they have uh, had interest in the past, and we've had conversations. Um, I mean, anything's possible. Oh my God! You know, anything is possible. <laughs> Don't when you give that sliver of hope, people. Uh, yeah, people like me are like, no, you're gonna blow my mind. Are you kidding me? Anyway, so I hope you make it happen. Please do. Well, I'll do, do it, it just for, for you. all of us. Um, you're married now. Mm -hmm. uh, what has life been on the road been like on the road, and you know, sometimes not being able to travel with your wife and and all that? Well, it's been really difficult lately because uh, she's about to pop. She's mm -hmm. just really pregnant, and um, I can't be there right now. And um, but thankfully, like I'm gonna be there just towards like the very end, about the next three four weeks before she delivers. Okay. So that. You know, I just made sure that that happened. But it's hard, you know. Uh, she's back home with her, her dad and her sister and stuff. But, you know, I, I want to be there. And, and it's, I don't know, the bond is definitely becoming a lot stronger. Um, I don't know if it's because of the baby or because Are of the situation. Are you nervous about being a dad? No, like, I'm definitely nervous. There's no, yeah. uh, not about being a That's dad. Normal. Not about being a dad. Okay. Um, I think 
more about just her well-being and just making sure um, everything's okay. So, women always get advice when they're pregnant. Have you gotten any advice? I don't get advice. I get warnings. Okay. From my boys. Okay, let's hear it. Look, what are some I, of the warnings? I say this all the time. They, they're like, and I think it's just they, they want me to go through a little bit of what they experienced. Yeah. Um, and like, I get it from Howie and like AJ, and they're like, and they'll chuckle and they say, they say, Nick, you know, get ready for no sleep. And I'm like, so basically, like, what does that mean? And yeah. th that's all they'll say. Get ready for no sleep. Just be prepared. I'm like, okay, great. So I'm not gonna sleep. Do they it. think it'll change? And I love you? sleep, so like it's like torture to me, like to think that. So you might, okay. So, so and I think they're just like, it's not like, sleep. oh, it's like it's gonna be great. No, it's like we were tortured. You'll be no, tired. We, we couldn't sleep, <laughs> and then not, at the same time, it's like you're you're trying to, you know, fulfill all the backstreet duties as well. Like a lot of these guys actually had their like how he had his baby, and then went right on the road, you know, and so he had to do diaper duty and all these things. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, is perform. So it's like we're multitasking, but you know we can handle it. Will it change you? I mean, I'm hoping it changes me for the better. Um, you know, I'm I'm ready for an adventure. I love new things that I that I've never experienced. Uh, that's why I always try try stuff. Is that sort of why you made the video? The new video is um, 19 and 99. Yeah. And in the video, there's like a fatherhood theme a little bit, no? Yeah. I'm so, playing on that. Okay. Ob so our, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like a rehearsal for you? Uh, I probably. Yeah. A foreshadowing. Are you going to be a strict dad or a fun dad? Well, okay. Let, I'm deep down inside. I'm always gonna. I'm a kid. I, I yeah. literally love being just. I, I still play video games to this day. I'm like. I'm, you know, but obviously there's responsibilities, right. and I'm going to be responsible. Uh, but um, I think when I made that music video, it was for all of the dads and people who get all these responsibilities, but deep down inside, they just want to like let it all go and just yeah. go crazy. So in the music video, I'm able to do that. You know, just who everyone wants to wreck their house. You know what I mean? Everyone <laughs> wants to just destroy everything that they created. You know, and or. Um, and I think it's just, it's just, I'm just trying to have fun, you know, and that's who I am. I'm a fun guy. And, uh, I, if you watch the music video, it's just, it's, it's everything that I am. I do want to talk about the time though, 19 and 99, which is where you were mm -hmm. at the turn of the millennium, uh, whatever millennium. So when you look back at that guy, what do you think? I mean, there was highs, there was lows, um, but majority of the time I was having fun um, and being a teenager I mean I was 19 years old so uh, discovering uh, finding my way through life and uh, but enjoying all the same things that everyone else was from discovering new music you know listening to Tupac and Biggie or you know whatever it is you know doing yeah. the things that you did in 1999 as a teenager but then at the same time I was the ironic thing was I was a Backstreet Boy, you know, and I and I I'm like I was on top of the world, mm -hmm. you know. Millennium had just mm -hmm. been released, the album, uh, we just released. I want it that way, mm -hmm. and so I, I had these. It, I had like this uh, kind of like dual life going on, yeah. You know, so it it's a really interesting song and t it was an interesting time in my life, and I was able to write something that I think had substance uh, when it came to the single. What would 2016 Nick tell 1999 Nick? Um, I mean, I 2016 Nick tell 1999 Nick. I, I, you know, there's. I can always say that there's. Everyone can say there's things that they wish that they could change or, or do, but I wouldn't because I enjoy who I am now. I, I love where I feel like one thing that might have been said or changed. I don't know, I think very back to the future-esque type stuff, sorry. And I'm like, <laughs> if I would have said one thing or changed one thing, you know, Doc Brown would be really upset with me, you know, and I would have altered the course of my life completely and might not have met certain people, okay. might not have met you. Okay. Who knows, things might have changed. So, you know, I'm You're not, really back to the future. Yeah, like, I'm really <laughs> analytical, you have to, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I have a final question because you cannot escape the headlines coming out of your home country, America, yeah. and that is there is an election happening. And yes. your brother tweeted his support for 
a, vi a presidential candidate by the name of Donald Trump. What are your thoughts? I don't get into politics. Good. That's Smart. number one. <laughs> okay. Um, so I can only say that whatever I'm saying is. Okay, I'm trying not to get into politics. I am into it lately because it's really intriguing <laughs> and it's can entertaining. Get away from and it. It's really entertaining, and I'm sure from the outside world, it's like even more entertaining. Because well, he's a celebrity yeah, too. I, and I just don't. I don't get into it. You know, I, I can only say that everybody has the right to choose who they want to choose, and they're allowed. Like that's that's their right. You know, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, I'm, I'm not into politics. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can read between the lines. <laughs> I think so. I think it's like really bold in between the lines. Yeah. Thank you. This is so fun. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I woke you up a little bit. You did actually. Where's um, my coffee? <laughs> but he does need his coffee.